Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1941, I Wake Up Screaming, starring Betty Grable, Victor Mature, and Carol Landis. It's the story of a promoter who's sure that he can make a Hollywood star out of a waitress. But when she's found murdered on the eve of her success, a police detective is hell-bent on framing him for the crime. Now the promoter has to seek the help of the waitress's sister to help get him out of the jam. Now this picture, it has a lot of interesting trivia footnotes to it. One is that when it was in production, it was originally going to be titled Hotspot, uh, and that is how it was released in the UK. But here in the United States, just before it was released, at the last second, they changed the title to I Wake Up Screaming. The problem was, is that the studio, 20th Century Fox, they had already sent out uh, movie posters, lobby cards, you know, things like that in advance of its release, and all of that was under the original intended title, Hotspot. And now, today, all of that surviving paraphernalia under the title Hotspot is now highly sought after by collectors. Another interesting note is that this picture from 1941, this was the first noir to be done by 20th Century Fox. And for Betty Grable, and I'm going to talk a lot more about her later on, but for Betty, and she was infinitely renowned, best remembered for all of her musicals and comedies. But this picture was her only noir. So, from 1941, I wake up screaming. Let's roll the picture. I can keep it up as long as you can. Listen, brother. You don't seem to get the idea at all. You're gonna fry for this. It means the hot spot. It does if you can pin it on me. But I don't think you can. I think we can. You're a pretty tough guy, aren't you, with the crowd around? Why don't you come out in the open so I can see you? Never mind that. When did you first meet Vicky Lynn? <sighs> Say, listen, fellas, why... Why don't you let me make a record of it? Then you can play it over to yourselves as often as you like. Go ahead, Frankie, just once more. Pick it up when you met her for the first time in that lunchroom on 8th Avenue. Okay, McDonald, for you I'll do it. Thanks. I'd been to the fights with a couple of friends of mine. We just dropped in for a cup of coffee. And, and hotcakes and coffee. Is that all? No, but the rest of it isn't on the menu. You couldn't afford it if it was. Say, you know something? 
Yes. I'm wasting my time being just an ordinary waitress. <laughs> Frankie, you're losing your grip. You know, I bet I can take that girl inside her six months, put her on top of the ladder. What ladder? You've promoted everything from prize fighters to fan dancers. But I doubt if even you, Maestro, could make a lady out of a hash slinger. Uh, put her in the right clothes, take her to the right places with the right people, and she can get by anywhere. It might be fun trying, even if it didn't work. Here she comes now, Frankie. Pour on the charm. How would you like to go to the El Chico Club tomorrow night? This is where I came in. I'm not kidding. I'll put you in a sable wrap and introduce you to Cafe Society. What do you say? I say you're out of your mind. Elena, I wish you had seen me as Romeo. I was magnificent. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? How old are you, anyhow? That, my dear lady Handel, is a secret that I keep, even from my own mother. <laughs> Who is that beautiful girl? Good evening, Mr. Christopher. Good evening. I have your table for you. I say I'm in luck. It just happens that I know the man that's with her. Who is he? Frankie Christopher, a sports promoter. Prize fights, hockey, ice carnivals, and girls. Mostly girls. Excuse me. Wine with the dinner and coffee later. Very good, sir. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Ray. Miss Lynn, I'd like you to meet the famous actor, Robin Ray. Actor? Really? How do you do? Listen, you little hash slinger. Don't give me any of that lady Vier to Vier stuff or I'll bite you. Am I overdoing it? Yes. But not bad. Hello, Christopher. How are things? How do you think? I think yes. Miss Lynn, I'd like you to know Larry Evans, the columnist. Larry, this is Miss Vicki Lynn. How do you do, Mr. Evans? I've read much about you. Indeed. Flattering, I hope. <laughs> Naturally. Most of it appeared in your own column. Ouch. Keep it up, Vicki. You're going swell. Yeah, that last line wasn't in the script. Well, sit down, boys. Sit down. Lynn. Lynn of the Baltimore Lynns, by any chance? No, no. My family came from Boston. The home of the bean, you know. Is that so? Do tell. May I have the next mazurka? Oh, I'd simply love it. Oh, no, you wait don't. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't bring Miss Leonard for you two chisels to cut in. Come on, boys, fight over. If she dances with anybody, it's going to be with me. Let us settle this dispute by claiming the ancient privilege of age before beauty. Go scuttle yourself. I saw her I first. Just, you can't gentlemen, talk to me like that. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I'll be your sir. Lady Handel presents her compliments. I would like to have Mr. Christopher and his party have supper with her. Why, we'd be delighted. Well... You're in, Vicky. Just pick up your feet and feel your way. <clears throat> Come out. All right, boys, let's go. May I present Miss Lynn and Mr. Christopher, Lady Henry. How do you do, Miss Lynn? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Christopher? How do you do? Uh, won't you be seated? Thank you. Robin, you sit here. Price on yourself yet. Well, I'll do everything I can. Give you a plug in my column every once in a while. You might do worse than to have your name linked with mine. I don't see how. <laughs> Good evening, Harry. May I please have my key? Get that key for Miss Lynn and be quick about it. Well, uh, good night, gentlemen. It's been wonderful, and, and I'm terribly grateful to you all. Well, uh, can't we go up for a moment? Oh, I'm afraid not. It's pretty late, and we might disturb my sister. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll be around for you the first thing in the morning. I'll be waiting for you. Sister. I hate girls with sisters. What are you beefing about? Have you seen her yet? No, have you? No. Then we're neck and neck. Say, listen, the day I find you and I are neck and neck, I'll know I'm running down. What's the matter with you getting so sore? She ain't nobody. Well, she will be, and when she is, you'll be lucky if you're allowed in the same neighborhood. What made you so sure you could make something of her? That's my business, promotion. 
She had looks, youth, good figure. What more do you want? I'm asking the questions. Then hurry up. I've got an appointment at the garden. Okay, McDonald. Now listen, Frankie. There's been a murder committed. And we're just trying to get to the bottom of things, that's all. What's your name? Jill Lynn. Any initials? No, just plain Jill. What relation are you to the dead girl? She was my sister. How long have you been living in New York? Well, Vicky had been here a couple of years, and after Mom died, I came on from Chicago to set up housekeeping with her. Even though we shared the same apartment, I, I saw very little of her during the last few weeks. Why was that? Well, you see, I have a position as a stenographer downtown, and Vicky was working on a night shift in a restaurant. We just kept different hours, that's all. What do you know about this man, Frankie Christopher? Nothing, except he was the one who first gave Vicky those grand ideas about becoming a celebrity. When did this start? The first time I knew it was serious was the night she came home from a nightclub. It was very late, and I had fallen asleep on the couch. Jill. Jill, what do you think? I've done it. I'm a success. See, what is all this? You know what happened? Lady Handel invited me over to her table. I met all the big shots. I danced with all the good-looking young men. And I've just got dozens and dozens of invitations. Invitations to do what? I'm never going back to that rotten old restaurant job. What? Why should I? Now I realize I've been wasting my time. I can be somebody. Vicky, you're not serious about giving up your job. Of course. Why should I go on slinging hash when I can sling other things? Vicky Lynn, have you gone right out of your mind? No, I haven't. Just come to my senses, that's all. Frankie Christopher thinks I have a great career before me. Who's Frankie Christopher? Oh, Jill, everyone knows Frankie Christopher. It's a famous sports promoter. What does he want you to do, roller skate or go over Niagara Falls in a barrel? Look, Jill. I already have an offer to post for a magazine cover and a cigarette ad. Vicky, wait a minute. When Mom died, we promised we'd look out for each other. I don't want to tell you your business, but don't you think you're making a fool of yourself? What do you mean? Oh, this, this Frankie Christopher. People like that, what have they got to do with people like us? Jill, they're going to help me. In what way? They're going to glamorize me. They may have started this thing as a gag, but after taking one look at those million-dollar debutantes tonight, I realize I can give them cards and spades and still come out on top. Vicky, you'll never come out on top by any shortcut. One week your face is on the cover of a magazine, the next it's in the ash can. Oh, I, I know I sound stuffy. Gee, I like a good time as well as the next. Jill, you're terribly sweet, but, well, we are different. I know the things I want and I know how to get them. So stop worrying about me, huh? Okay. What you need now is sleep. If you lose your looks, you've lost your entire bankroll. Good night. When was the first time you met Frankie Christopher? It was the following morning. I was cooking breakfast. I think he's here. Okay, I'm just putting on a dress. Is Miss Lynn in? Which Miss Lynn? The glamour girl or just the plain ordinary garden variety? Oh, you're her sister. You're quick. I'm Frankie Christopher. That's what I was afraid of. May I come in? Sure. This is just a dump, but if you can find a place to sit down... Say, why all the cracks? You don't know anything about me yet. I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. What's the idea of handing Vicky this line about making her a big shot? That's no line. I believe it sincerely. After all, that's my business, discovering talent, trying to put it across. Here, take a look at that. Hmm, feeding time at the zoo. Where are you? I don't believe in having my picture taken. That's for those I'm trying to put across. I just stay in the background where I belong. Modest, aren't you? Not particularly. It's just a superstition, that's all. Is that Frankie? Yes, dear. Hold it for me, Jill. Don't let him get away. You come out and do your own holding. Good morning, Frankie. That's a nice dress you put on. 
From that moment on, life became just one great dizzy world for her. She was asked everywhere. She got offers to pose for advertisements, model clothes, enter the aqua cave, join the ice ballet, every possible form of publicity. She even remembered the singing lessons Mom had paid for and suddenly started to fancy herself as a chanteuse. Frankie even managed to get her a job singing with the name band. And finally, one morning, things came to a climax. I wonder what's keeping him. I left a message hours ago. Why, Jill, what are you getting so excited about? Nothing, except he's going to be awfully mad. Don't worry. I can handle him. Glad you think so. I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the gold in Kentucky. Do you think that's him? Uh-huh, I know it's not. Come in. What's up? Well, it's not exactly going to be a wedding. Well, I'm sorry I was up all night. Darling, something terrible has happened. I, I don't quite know how to tell you. It's so embarrassing. But of course, I realize everything you've done for me, but... Well, life is so uncertain nowadays, isn't it? Get to the point. Well, I... I'm going away. Away? Where? I couldn't help it, really. I couldn't. I just happened to run into this man and... Uh, purely business, you understand. Where are you going? To Hollywood. Hollywood? As I said, I... I just happened to run into this man, and he wanted to make a screen test of me. I didn't see any harm in it, so I said yes. I didn't want to tell you in case it turned out badly. I wanted to surprise you. But it turned out simply wonderfully, and I, I've signed a long-term contract. When are you going? I leave tomorrow night. Congratulations. Oh, now, Frank, you wait a minute. I, I... Look, I've always been on a level with you, haven't I? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, Frankie, I know what you're thinking. After all, you did take me out of the restaurant, introduce me to the right people and all that sort of thing, but... Well, I have some brains, too. It was me they were interested in. Some people think I'm a very attractive girl. You didn't create that. I'm no Frankenstein, you know. I wonder. Come in. Robin. Larry, how sweet of you both to come. Well, what's, what's the matter? What happened? Are you all right? I came as soon as I got your message. Dear Robin, dear Larry, something terrible has happened. This whole thing started me thinking I was wrong and Vicky was right. After all, she had ended up with a Hollywood contract and I was still pounding a typewriter and breaking my fingernails. But that's the trouble with giving advice nowadays. So much of it turns out wrong. When Vicky told me she had that Hollywood job all set up behind my back, I... Well, you could have knocked me down with a feather. So you knocked her down instead, is that it? No, wise guy, I did exactly what you would do. I got cock-eyed. Do you mind turning that thing down a little? Not at all. Women are all alike. For Pete's sake, what difference does that make? You've got to have them. They're standard equipment. Can you imagine her walking out on me after all that I've done for her? Me! You've done for her? What have you done for her? Well, I took her around to all the bright spots. I let her be seen with me everywhere. It made her seem important. Why, you parboiled old ham. You don't think anybody thought there was anything between you two, do you? If it hadn't been for my plugging in the column, people would have thought she was your trained nurse. Why, you ink stinking word slinger. I was famous when they were changing your pants 20 times a day. What's the use of bickering? We've all gotten it. We're nearly wore the beads. We may as well admit it. Surely you got some fun out of it. That's where you're wrong. All I got was a handshake, a smile, and a promise. I had to sit around with that sour puss sister hers half the time waiting for Vicky to come home. You're kidding. On a level. Night after night. Didn't you even get a souvenir? Well, I, uh... Got this. She gave it to me once when she had an appointment. She told me to go up to her apartment and wait. I waited, and she came in with you. Well, I'll be darned. There's another for the scrapbook. I wonder if there could have been somebody else in her life all the time. Well, if there was, he must have been a locksmith. Was there anyone in her life before this Frankie Christopher? 
On your last visit to New York, for instance, about a year ago, any little incident that you can remember may be of enormous help. She was working in the restaurant then and working pretty hard. She didn't have much time for running around and... Now that you mention it, I... I do remember a queer thing that happened. I didn't think much of it at the time, but... Well, I was sitting in the place one night, waiting for her to finish up so we could go home when... I'll be with you in a minute, sis. Okay. an admirer. There was some guy looking through the window at you like the wolf looked at the three little pigs. I'm used to that. With that plate glass window, I've got about as much privacy as a lingerie mannequin. It doesn't mean a thing. That's the one. Kiki, you creeps. You'll have to get used to that. We've got more wolves in New York than they have in Siberia. I saw him several times after that. He never said anything, never accosted us or bothered us in any way, but frightened me. There was something strange about him. The way he'd look at her. The way he'd turn up in the most unexpected places. Perhaps if you could find that man, you'd find the murderer. Mysterious stranger, huh? Young lady, you'll have to do better than that. Me and my partner weren't born yesterday. Why are you trying to protect Frankie Christopher? I'm not trying to protect him. I just don't believe he did it, that's all. Was there ever anything between you and this Frankie Christopher? What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. You were in love with him, weren't you? That's a lie. You were in love with him and he didn't give you a tumble, so you put your sister out of the way. Let me out of here. You have no right to talk to me like that. Who do you think you are? I'm just a poor, underpaid detective trying to get at the facts. Well, I demand to see somebody in authority. I want to see the head man around here. Get Cornell. We don't want to get tough with you unless we have to. Look, I told you a thousand times I didn't do it. Oh, Inspector, you want it inside. All right, boys, keep him warm. I'll be right back. Here you are. Thanks. All right, young lady. Here's the head man. That's him. That's the man. What's this? She's crazy. She said she saw a mysterious stranger peeking through the window of the joint where her sister worked. Now she says it's Ed. What about it, Ed? Do you peek through windows? Sure, when it happens to be my district. That's my job, Miss Lynn, to look at people. I admit he looks as if he'd do anything, but at the time of the murder, he happened to be up in Albany with me. Frankie Christopher took you and your sister out for a ride the evening before the murder. What happened on that ride? There, there's nothing important about that. Vicky was just imagining things. Like you? I'm not imagining anything. I did see you. All right, all right. I'm a peeping Tom. Now, about the ride. Well, it's really so silly. I, I hate to... Come on, let's have it. Christopher just told me all about it, so you'd better not withhold anything. Well, it was the night before Vicky was to leave for Hollywood. Frankie came by to pick us up in his car and take us for a ride. We were driving along, not thinking much of anything, when... We'll be sorry to see you go, Vicky. No, you won't. You'll be glad. What? You'll be glad to get rid of me. 
Jill's in love with you, haven't you noticed? Vicky, don't be silly. I'm not silly. I've known it a long time. She's tried to cover it up, but I've known. You're crazy. Nothing like that's ever entered my head. I know. It's much deeper than that. That's why it's so dangerous. Anything might happen. Let's go back now, shall we? Now, she said to Christopher, you'll be glad to get rid of me. Is that it? Word for word? Yes. But she didn't mean anything like that. What she meant, we'll never know. It's what she said that counts. Now, tell us how and when you found the body. Well, it was about 5.30 in the afternoon. I'd gotten away early from the office. Even as I came out of the elevator, I, I had a feeling that something was wrong. I don't know quite how to explain it, but there was music coming from the apartment, and... I just came in. Just a second. Jill, you don't think I did it, do you? You don't, do you? clear on what happened after that. The next thing I knew, the room was filled with police. Thank you very much, Miss Lynn. You've been most helpful. I give up. Say, you fellows give up too easy. How about playing a couple games of gin rummy? Exactly what did Vicky mean when she said you'll be glad to get rid of me? Where did you get that? Never mind where I got it. What'd she mean? I don't know. I'll tell you what she meant. She knew you resented her running out on you. When you left those two fellas at the bar, you started to get drunk. You drank all that night and the next day. Your mind became more and more inflamed until you were mad with jealousy and hurt pride. I say you went up there and killed her in cold blood. That's not true. It is true. I got a good mind to kill you myself right now. Oh, take it easy, Ed. Take it easy. That's all for today, Frankie. Sorry to bother you. How about a couple of tickets for the Rodeo? You don't need any seats for the Rodeo. All you need is a couple more bulls in here and you can have one of your own. The assistant DA wants to see Christopher in his office right away. Hey, uh, Frankie, you see, he probably wants to apologize. Thanks. What's the idea of riding him so hard? Donald, I've had 15 years' experience in this racket. If that isn't the look of a guilty man, I'll take the rap myself. Here he comes. What's the dope, Frankie? Give us a break, will you? Yeah, what'd he say? Sorry, boys, no statement. Allow me. What's the idea of the decoration? I hear Ed Cornell is taking charge of the investigation himself. That's right. Brother, when that guy says you're cooked, you're cooked. He hasn't lost a conviction in his entire career. <laughs> Here, pin the crepe on Cornell. His career is dead. Mr. Christopher, I'm terribly sorry if you've been caused any inconvenience. I hope none of our men were too rough with you. No, no, not at all. They've been perfect little gentlemen. The fact is, somebody has made a terrible mistake. I was just explaining to Miss Lynn here that it seemed so logical that you were the guilty one. Huh. Doesn't it now? No, I think we know the identity of the killer. Who is it? A boy by the name of Harry Williams, switchboard operator at the apartment house. Do you mind if I go now? Well, not in the least, Miss Lynn. Sorry to have troubled you. Bye. Bye. What 
makes you think Williams did it? We just got a call from one of our men. Williams has been missing since 5.30 last night. He's probably hiding out somewhere, scared and shaky. But don't worry, we'll find him. Well, you better be quick about it, because if I find him first, you're going to have another murder on your hands. Jill! Jill, can't we be friends? This is a nice time to be thinking about that. I'm sorry you told that story about the car. I couldn't help it. Besides, it didn't mean anything anyway. Vicky didn't know what she was saying. You know that, don't you? Sure. May I take you home? No, thanks. I don't want any more reminders around than are necessary. with my eyes open. What do you want? Someday you're gonna talk in your sleep. And when that day comes, I want to be around. It's no use, Cornell. I'm not the type. Have you got a warrant? No. This is strictly my own idea. I'm working on my own time. Then get out of here. I don't like rats in my bedroom. Now wait. You don't seem to realize I'm doing you a favor. I'm keeping you posted on the progress of this case. For instance, I found this cigarette butt crushed out in a clothes closet. It was also an evening slipper that had been stepped on as if somebody had waited there, hiding. Do you often smoke in clothes closets? Not since I was a kid. It happens to be your brand. According to the latest statistics, 10 million people smoke that brand, including the Army and Navy. Maybe it was a mass murder. I know it doesn't mean much by itself. But every little bit counts. When I get all my evidence together, I'm gonna have you tied up like a pig in a slaughterhouse. Perhaps they're keeping it from you, but they told me at headquarters that they think Harry Williams did it. I think they're wrong. Oh, I see. They believe Williams did it, but you're the holdout. You're the bright boy, is that it? Maybe. You know, you're like something out of a museum. You ought to have a magnifying glass and one of those trick hats with ear flaps. Why don't you look in that box? <laughs> Collar buttons. That's right. Say, you're wonderful. You know, I think I'll carry you around just for laughs. I don't mind the kidding. You're a pretty cocky fellow, Frankie. You've had your own way for a long time. First with Vicki Lynn, and now with her sister. Get out of here. Find Harry Williams, that's your job. If I ever catch you around here again, I'll, they'll have to pick you up with a sieve. Lynn? I thought you'd gone away. I just went over to Brooklyn to see my parents. I didn't realize it would cause such a fuss. I explained everything to the cops. Oh, I, I thought... Well, you you shouldn't have thought that, Miss Lynn. You, you, you know I wouldn't do a thing like that, don't you? Yes. I'm moving. I, I've come for Vicky's things. Yes, I know. The superintendent told me you were coming. I have everything here. All packed and ready to go. But who packed them? I did. Well, you shouldn't have done that. You should have gotten permission. Well, I wanted to help. I, 
thought it might be of some help. Well, as long as you've done it, thanks very much. Will you help me carry them to the cab? Hello. Oh, just a minute. It's Mr. Christopher. He wants to speak to you. Tell him I'm not in. I've gone away. She's not in. She's gone away. Well, where's she gone? He wants to know where you've gone. Just tell him there's no forwarding address. Sorry, there's no forwarding address. Was the funeral nice? It was very quiet. There wasn't anybody there except me. I wanted to come. Why didn't you? I didn't think it was my place. Bye, Miss Lynn. Thanks, Harry, for helping with the bags. I don't want your money. Now, give me those reports on Robin Ray and Larry Evans in the Lynn case. Yes, sir. Good morning, Chief. What do you want? Nothing much. Alan, get out of here and get to work. You're falling down on this case, Cornell. You haven't got a thing so far. I got my suspicions. Suspicions? What good are suspicions without proof? Now that Harry Williams is out of the running, we're no further along than we were at the beginning. I'll get something out of him. Just give me time. I thought you said Williams didn't do it. I'm not talking about Williams. I'm talking about Frankie Christopher. Christopher? Christopher? All you talk about is Christopher. What about some of the others? That ham actor Robin Ray or Larry Evans, the newspaper columnist. Let's sweat him a little. Better leave the newspaper man alone till you get something solid. He might give you bad notice. <clears throat> All right, then. Call in the actor. He couldn't kill my... Son. Did I ask for your opinion? Bring in the actor now. All right. I think you're wasting your time. Do you mind if I bring in Frankie Christopher, too? What do you want him for? Have you got anything new? No, I'd just like to have him around. doing down here? Oh, they asked me to come along. I seem to be their favorite customer. You know, it's perfectly ridiculous. I had nothing to do with this. I just came down to be obliging. How do they go about these things? What do they do to you? Oh, nothing much. It's sort of like playing handball. Only <laughs> you're the ball. Say, you should have worn overalls. You know, I'm afraid you're going to get that suit all messed up. Are you serious? What do you think? This way, boys. Follow me. No lights? You're lucky. Go ahead. You're an actor. Pretend you're going to your execution. Sit right over here, fellow. The glow of sunset in the summer sky Flicker of the fireflies, the gleam of love light in your lovely eyes. These are the things I love. A silver moonbeam peeping through the trees, a bed of tulips nodding in the breeze. The look you give in answer to my plea. 
These are the things I love Oh, once I thought that life was just a winter thing My heart was cold And then you came to me And like a breath of spring You turned the silver snow to gold Let me out! Let me out of here! Pick him up to my office. There was something so young, so fresh, so full of life about Vicky that the very sight of her gave me new hope. She made me feel that perhaps I might succeed again in both my life and my profession. But when I told her that, she just laughed at me. She told me that I was a has-been. She said she was going places and didn't want to hitch her wagon to a... a falling star. I even arranged for a screen test for both of us. A director I knew said he would give us a chance. But when the day came, she went down there alone. They decided they didn't need me. Well, I couldn't stand that. I went down there and started a row. And a few days later, when she sent for Christopher and Evans and me, I pretended to them that I knew nothing about it. And I pretended to myself that I didn't care. But I... I didn't kill her! Where were you on the day of the murder? I was in a sanitarium on East 77th Street. I go there occasionally when things get tough and they take care of me. You can verify that, if you like, by calling the doctor. Check up on that. I've already checked. You were there, all right. So there goes another one of your suspects. Is that all for today, gentlemen? Yeah, for today. Hello, Frankie. I see they're still letting you out of here. Oh, I come and go as I please. They made me a trustee. Cornell must be slipping. According to my calendar, you should be in the death house by now. Uh-oh. Well, if it isn't Operator 13. The nails for your coffin. Hi, Inspector. How about giving me a lift uptown, Frankie? Sure. Always glad to oblige a ghoul. Right this way. You can drop me at 58th and Madison. I live on the corner. Okay. I'm sorry to have to ask you to do this, but I'm a little short on cash lately. You see, I've spent so much of my own dough trying to build up this case against you. Well, if there's anything you need, just let me know. Well, I imagine they'll make it right with me when I bring in the material for your trial. They usually do in these cases. I nick a guy on my own time and send him up to the chair. Then I get back pay. Must be a great life, like a garbage man, only with people. I got practically all the evidence I need now. I could arrest you today for that matter, but you might get some smart mouthpiece and get off with life instead of the chair. I won't be satisfied until I'm sure it's the chair. You're a gay dog, Cornell. You make me feel as if I'm driving a hearse. Well, I know you're a type. I've seen hundreds of them. I don't scare you enough to make you commit suicide, but I worry you just the same. And when the day comes, they all act different. Some scream, a few faint. Some light a cigarette and try a wisecrack. But it sticks in their throats, especially when they're hung. <laughs> I tell you, Betty Grable and Carol Landis. Two gorgeous dames in the same film. And you probably noticed this, that the film's musical score includes the tune Over the Rainbow, you know, from The Wizard of Oz. Now that, remember, The Wizard of Oz was also from 20th Century Fox, so I'm wondering if we kind of have some tandem marketing going on here. But it is too bad that Vicky, uh, being played by Carol Landis, too bad she was killed off so early in the film, but at least they're keeping her in throughout the picture by using flashback scenes. 
Now, Carol Landis, and yeah, she's the one playing Vicky. She was mostly in very small, uncredited roles throughout the 1930s. But she finally got her big break in 1940 when she was in 1 million BC, uh, something of a science fiction picture. And in that one, she played the role of Loana, which was, uh, she was a, she was a cave woman in a very skimpy outfit, which I'm sure helped things along. But that picture, that was the one that propelled her to fame. And in that picture, she was in that one uh, with Victor Mature. So, you know, tonight's picture, of course, but those two, uh, Landis and Mature, also worked together in 1 million BC. But uh, she did have a very troubled life, uh, had multiple marriages, multiple affairs, and uh, she did finally end up committing suicide a few years later in 1948 when she was just 29 years old. Uh, Victor Mature, and he's the one playing Frankie, he was born in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, he grew up there. But during World War II, uh, he enlisted in the Coast Guard. Uh, he served in the Greenland Patrol. And uh, he also did a lot of war bond and recruiting tours. Uh, also did some shows entertaining the troops. You know, kind of a USO style show. Um, and later on in the war, he was also, uh, uh, he served aboard a troop transport in the Pacific. Now, some of his notable films, uh, he was in 1953's The Robe. He was in 1954's Demetrius and the Gladiators. 1947's The Kiss. And my personal favorite, he was in 1949's Samson and Delilah. You know, of course, that was back in, uh, during that era, what were called sandal movies. You know, films that were set like in biblical times, you know, where everyone wore Roman sandals. <laughs> yeah, so he was in a few of those sandal movies. Well, let's get back to I Wake Up Screaming. All right, Dracula, get your rotten corpse out of that seat. Thanks. Not at all. It won't be long now. Just a day or two. enough questions already. Now go away. Now don't be like that, Miss Lynn. You want to find the man who killed your sister, don't you? Of course. Maybe I can help you. Maybe you can help me. It's simply a matter of justice. Nice little place you got here. The Garden of Hope. Do you believe in hope, Miss Lane? Naturally. What's the good of living without hope? It can be done. Miss Lynn, 
I got a hunch you know more than you're telling me, especially about Frankie Christopher. That's not true. I've told you everything I know. What more could there be? If I knew, I wouldn't be asking, would I? Now listen. I know what you're going through. But justice is justice. That guy's a sham. He played your sister for a sucker. When she tried to run out on him, he let her have it. I don't believe that. You're in love with him, aren't you? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Your sister knew it, and I know it. You're in love with him and trying to cover up his tracks. But it won't work. I'll get him with your help or without it. I've never been wrong yet. That man's guilty. If you know what's good for you, you'll play along with me. Get out of here! You keep telling yourself he's innocent, don't you? But you're not certain. That's what's driving you crazy. If you were certain, you wouldn't be holding out on me, would you? Get out of here! All right, Miss Lynn. But take it over. Mr. Frank Christopher, Columbus 46738. Say, you look all right. Thanks. Going? Well, first of all, we're going to the fights. Frankie, do you really think we should? Why not? I've got nothing to be ashamed of. I know, but... Don't worry, I'll take you in the gallery where the real fans go. wasn't bad. He looks so little, I don't know which is which. I own a piece of the boy in the green pants. Take it easy. Take your time. He's a great little kid. I, I raised him from a pup. Take it easy. Did you ever bring Vicky here? No, she wasn't interested. Clumsy referee, he's nearsighted. We only keep him on out of charity. Hello, Frankie. How are you? Hello, Gus. How's business? Ah, so sure, sure. I love this neighborhood. I was brought up here. I even miss the L. It used to sound like thunder. Did you ever bring Vicky down here? No, Vicky liked the nightclubs. I've never been in a New York nightclub. What? No. See, I've never known a man who had the cover charge. Lady, we're going to fix that right now. Yes, sir. Hi, Frankie. Hello, Zinsky. How's tricks? Not so good. I still got that ringing in my head. That's too bad. Here, get yourself a big dinner and see what happens. Thanks, Frankie. Keep punching. Who's that? He used to be a pretty good heavyweight, but he's slap happy now. He always hears the bell in his head. He seemed to know you were going to give him that money. I always do. I may be a has-been myself someday. Perhaps this isn't wise, Frankie. Are you sure we ought to be seen together? I was never so sure of anything in my life.
know about that. Pardon me, baby, while I go out and sink a battleship. Would you like to dance? No, thanks. I don't feel like dancing. Why did you suddenly call me tonight? It's very simple. I was lonely, and I thought you might possibly be lonely, too. Is that all? Of course. You know, I'm not sure I like being just another member of the Lonely Hearts Club. You might do better by looking up the advertisements. Bachelor, $75,000, with two glass eyes. The trouble with you is you pretend you don't care about things, but you do. You were very upset by Vicky's death, weren't you? Sure. If I could find the guy who did it, I might save the state something on his electricity bill. She was a good kid. Did you love her? No. Do you think if I'd loved her, I would have tried to exploit her the way I did? Vicky was pretty, gay, and amusing. She had lots to offer, and I wanted to put her in the right place on the map. After all, that's my business. But when a man really loves a woman, he doesn't want to plaster her face all over the papers and magazines. He wants to keep her to himself. Right in here. I never thought of that. I feel like dancing now. Scrap the stuff about the Japanese spy with the Kodak and run this. What sister of what recently murdered girl is stepping out with the dead girl's boyfriend? Dancing on the grave, I call it. The murderer has yet to be found. You dance well. Vicky said I was terrible. Well, dancing sort of depends. Yes, I, I know. Well, how'd you like your first New York nightclub? Oh, it was wonderful. Especially the dancing. Thanks. Where would you like to go now? It's pretty late. Where do you usually go? <laughs> if I told you, you'd laugh. Go ahead, I could use a good laugh. I go swimming. Swimming? Where? The Lido Plunge. You see, when I was a kid on the east side, it used to be the biggest adventure of my life whenever I could save up a quarter and go to the Lido. I never got enough of it. So, now that I'm in the chips, I go swimming there every chance I get. <laughs> anyway, it's healthy. If you've got an extra quarter on you, I'd like to go along. Are you kidding? No. You're on. You hurt my eyes. Oh, thanks, mister. Madame, could I interest you in a nice cold swim? Funny, I was just going to ask you that. So, well, let's go. idea of real luxury. You know, if I ever inherit a gold mine, I'll have a swimming pool in every room. And you can swim in all of them. Do you tell that to every girl you bring down here? So help me, I never brought a girl here in my life. Hi, Frankie. Hello. Well, here we are. It's been a wonderful evening. Thanks. You've been swell. Frankie, will you come upstairs a minute? There's something of Vicky's I know she'd want you to have. Sure. It's a note you wrote to Vicky. Found it among her things before the police arrived. Dear Vicky, after what you did last night, the sooner you're out of the way. Did I write that? It's your signature. Well, it was after that ride together, what she said, it. It was so unfair to you. I know what you meant, but I don't think anybody else would. Why didn't you turn this in? I didn't know. Until tonight, it was when we were dancing. 
I suddenly understood the letter and a lot of other things besides. I'd like to have a look at that letter, if you don't mind. Dear Vicky, after what you did last night, the sooner you're out of the way, the better. Nice of you to put in writing. All right, Murphy, you wait in the hall. I knew you were holding something back. You're the Mona Lisa type. I can spot him a mile away. Oh. Jill! Well, here we are, Frankie. I've looked forward to this moment for a long time. You're trying to frame me. I don't have to frame you. You frame yourself. How about this little note? Anybody might have written a note like that. I was burned up. Well, you're going to have plenty of time to cool off before I'm through with you. I found these in your room. Exhibit A, one pair of brass knuckles. And Vicky was hit behind the ear with a weapon the size of a fist, only much harder. It's a frame. You're trying to frame it. You planted those, you... you... Oh. A frame. That's what they all say. Murphy saw me take those knuckles from your bureau drawer. Jill. You don't believe all this stuff, do you? What does it matter what she believes? You're like a rat in a box without any holes. Well, they're gonna make a hole for you, Mr. Handsome Harry. Six by three, filled with quick lock. You shouldn't have done that, Jill. It makes you an accomplice. Quick, through the kitchen. There's a doorway leading to the hall. Go on. Leave the cop to me. Quick! Officer! He's trying to escape. He went through the bedroom. but I don't do this sort of thing very often. You're going great. Hope the man doesn't mind our using his things. I'll leave him a note of apology. You're a great sport, Jill. You're not so bad yourself. Why did you do it? I don't know. But when I saw you standing there so helpless and that big fathead bullying you, I, I just had to hit something. Is that the only reason? No. I guess Vicky was right about us, wasn't she? Glad? What do you think? Frankie, we've got to get out of this town as fast as we can. Are you sure you want to go through with it? <laughs> no, it isn't very much fun being married to a hunted man. Besides, most married men have a hunted look anyway. Frank! First thing we gotta do in the morning is get some money. I've got some lady away in a safe deposit box downtown. Well, they'll be watching that, won't they? Not this one. I put it away under my original name. Frank, you're not really a crook, are you? Of course not. I, I took the name Christopher because it's easy to spell. What's your real name? I hate to tell you. You've got to tell me if I'm going to use it. Okay. Botticelli. Botticelli. Mrs. Botticelli. Why, that's not bad at all. What are we going to do in the meantime? I'm going to show you how to play hide and seek in the big city. tired of it already. I'm just beginning to get warmed up. Nobody seems to be particularly interested in it except you. Probably waiting for the revolution.
put your shoes on, sister. see that picture once more, I think I'd rather give myself up. I don't blame you. Now listen, I want you to wait for me in the public library until I get the money. Oh, why can't I come with you? I think it's better that we separate for the time being. You'll be safer there. What makes you think that's safe? <laughs> Nobody in their right mind is ever in the public library at 9 o'clock. And if anything does go wrong, you meet me here. Now be careful. All right, young lady, come along with us. What have you done to Frankie? Never mind about that. Come along. You haven't heard him, have you? Can't you people read? Sorry, Pops. Stick around. or it may be a pipe. Then again, it may be just my finger. But you're not taking any chances, are you? No, I don't have to. What's on your mind, Frankie? You've taken Jill. She hasn't got anything to do with this. Let her go and I'll give myself up. You've turned into quite the young Lockenbar, haven't you? Self-sacrifice and everything. Well, it's no use, Frankie. I don't have to make bargains with you. I'll get you eventually. If not tomorrow, next week. If not next week, next year. Time's nothing in my life, it is in yours. Each minute's an eternity to a man in your shoes. At the wrong steer this time, Cornell. They told me at headquarters that you're a pretty sure thing. But this time you're trying to convict an innocent man. That's what you say. But you can't sell me on it. I'll follow you into your grave. I'll write my name on your tombstone. You're not a cop looking for a murderer. You're crazy, Cornell. You ought to be put away. Sure. Why don't you call a policeman? All right, Cornell. But I'll tell you one thing. You're never going to convict me. You'll have to kill me first. I wouldn't kill anybody. I'm too smart. Look, I don't even carry a gun. You can frisk me. I wouldn't touch you with sterilized gloves. Here, have a tootsie roll. Hey, beat all the pirates! Slay the cards! Beat all the pirates! Hey, next day! Hey, slay the cards! Beat all the pirates! Hello, Chief. Hello. Got a lead on Christopher yet? Did you ever read The Sex Life of the Butterfly by Faber? Cornell, are you crazy? That's funny. It's the second time I've been asked that question tonight. Have a Tootsie Roll? What in blazes has The Sex Life of the Butterfly got to do with the Lynn case? Faber was a naturalist. He got himself a very rare female butterfly from Africa worth a thousand bucks. And kept it in a glass box in his apartment in Paris. But nobody had ever been able to catch the male of the species. One day, he let the female out of the box, 
And in a few hours, he had $10,000 worth of rare African butterflies flying around the room. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. But what's all this got to do with the Lynn case, may I ask? I want a release order for the girl. Just let her out of the box. Nature will do the rest. We'll have Frankie in the net by tomorrow. Yeah, you may be right at that. But if you slip up this time, Cornell, it's curtains to a brilliant career. You realize that, of course. Sure. I realize that more than you do. My girl for nothing. They think I'm still in the apartment. Yeah? Well, we're getting out of town right now. Wait a minute. I found something. These cards. They were on the flowers that were sent to Vicky's funeral. Who are they from? I don't know. Maybe we won't have to leave town after all. Good evening. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm from the Evening Ledger. They sent me out here on an assignment. May I come in? Sure, sure. Come in. You know, I'm glad to see anybody that's still moving around. Well, what can I do for you? I've been assigned to write a human interest story on Vicki Lynn. I was wondering whether you could help me. Any colorful or unusual little incident connected with the funeral, for instance? Lynn, Lynn, let me see. Oh, that's the girl who was murdered up on 76th Street, ain't it? That's right. Well... I don't know much I can tell you. The only thing, we got our orders and laid her away the same as anybody else. Uh, has anybody been out here since? Uh, no. Were there many flowers at the funeral? No, just the order. Wait a minute.
Lynn. Lynn. 266. Say, that grave's been getting flowers every day since she died. Who'd they come from? I don't know. Never was any signature on the card. Just come regular from some florist around Times Square named uh, Kiting or Keating or something like that. But do you have a telephone directory? Sure, over there. Help yourself. I'm sorry, Miss Smith. I usually like to oblige newspaper people, but in this case, I'm between two fires. Then the man who's been sending the flowers is also from a newspaper? Well, in a, in a way, yes. But he isn't a reporter. Does he write a column? Well, I, I can't say that, can I, or else I'd give it away. Thanks, Mr. Keating. I, I think I get your drift. Well, don't get me in any trouble. Who is it? Your columnist friend. Pleasant surprise. What's the idea of breaking into my place like this in the middle of the night? What do you know about the death of Vicki Lynn? You're a fine one to ask that. I know nothing about it. Then why have you been sending flowers to her grave every day? Oh, so you've found out about that, have you? I can explain that easily. Then go ahead. I promised her. Promised her? Yes. Mind if I smoke? Not at all. You won't need that. I just thought I'd try it. It'd be a great scoop for me if I could bring you in myself. So you think I'm guilty too? Yes, and so does everybody else. What do you mean you promised to send Vicky flowers? Well, the day of the murder, I'd driven Vicky to the station to get her train reservations. You mean you were with Vicky the afternoon she was killed? Yes. Then why didn't you tell that to the police? Because I'm not a fool. You told the police your story, what'd it get you? Never mind that. Go on. When we got back to the apartment, she'd forgotten her key. She asked me if I had the one she gave me, and I told her I'd raffled it off. Oh, dear, the pass key's gone, too. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but sit and wait for the switchboard boy to get back. From what I've seen of that boy, he may be gone for hours. I'd better climb up the fire escape and let you in myself. Why, Larry, you'd never do anything so gallant. You don't know me. sweet. You know, uh, now that I'm leaving, I'm really a little unhappy about it. Oh, forget it. If I weren't sure I'd be a success, I'd, well, I'd never do a thing like this. I'm sure you'll be a success. You've got a heart made out of rock candy. You won't forget me, will you? I won't for at least two weeks. Two weeks isn't very long, is it? It is for a columnist. I'll tell you what I'll do. For the first two weeks, I'll send you flowers every day. It'll make a great impression where you're going. Oh, Larry, will you really? Promise? I promise. A promise is a promise. I hope it still makes an impression wherever she is. I think it smells. What did you do after that? I left. Was a boy at the switchboard when you came down? No, no. I remember the board was buzzing as I passed by. Did you notice anything unusual about the room when you went in? Yeah, now that you mention it, there seemed to be the smell of cigarette smoke in the air. I thought maybe Jill had just left, or... Jill was at the office. Good grief, you don't think he did it, do you? Now, do you understand what you have to do? Give me a half hour, then telephone him. Oh, Frankie, I'm scared. Don't do it, please. This is the only chance I have. I've got to take it. Good luck, dear. Still, Mac, I'd hate to put a hole in you. Put that gun away, Frankie. We've got enough against you as it is. Not until you've heard me out. I got a lead on the real killer, but I need your help. Sorry, Frankie. I'm on the other side of the fence. Okay, then. I'll make you a sporting proposition. 
You trust me for just a half an hour, and I'll trust you. Well, I guess a half hour won't do any harm. But I'll take that just in case. Come on. and waited for him in the apartment. When Evans came through the window to let her in, you hid in the closet. After he left, you came out. You tried to grab her and she screamed. You became frightened and killed her. I didn't know what I was doing, I swear. She screamed and I lost my head. Sure, sure I understand. Do you? Do you? Sure. I told the cop how it was when he traced me to Brooklyn. He said he understood too. So he told me just to come back here and keep quiet. He'd forget all about it. What cop? The big one. In Cornell? That's the one. Did you hear that, Mac? Cornell knew I was innocent all the time. Yes? Yes, Jill. Everything's all right. He came through. Oh, Frankie, I'm so glad. I'll be right down. Mac, I want one more favor. Five minutes alone with Cornell. Okay, Frankie, I guess you got it coming here. You don't mind my breaking in on you like this. Have you come to give yourself up? I don't have to. I just had a long talk with Harry Williams. That must have been very enlightening. Yes. Very enlightening. I'm a sick man, Frankie. But your soul, Cornell. Maybe. You knew Williams was the one that killed Vicky all the time. Sure, I'm not dumb. You knew it, and yet you wanted to fry me. That's 
Right. Why? Why didn't you go after Williams? He was the one that killed her. I lost Vicky long before Williams killed her. You were the one who took her away from me, not him. Don't make me laugh. Yeah. I guess it must seem funny to you, a worm like me looking up to a woman like that. I followed her around for months before I got up enough courage to speak to her. I used to hang around the restaurant at night to see that she got home all right. Then finally I got a chance to help her. It was New Year's Eve. Two guys tried to get fresh with her, so I stepped in. She seemed really grateful and friendly-like. We had a cup of coffee together. I saw her several times after that, and it was always the same. She took me on my own ground. Then I started to hope that we might get to know each other better. That I might even get up enough courage to ask her to marry me someday. I took this apartment, started to furnish it. Bought the perfume she liked. I intended to surprise her with it. Then you came along with your grand plans of making something of her. Putting ideas into her head that she was a glamour girl and all that kind of stuff. Why didn't you leave her alone? She started getting too good for me. I felt like a fool with this apartment. I could have killed you then, Christopher. Why didn't you? Because I had the hook in your mouth, and I wanted to see you suffer. Well, it's all over now, Cornell. You're going to be put away. Yeah, but not where you think. The guy who sold me this medicine told me it would cure everything. Frankie! Frankie, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't know either. They're both strangers to me. Many times hearing the tune Over the Rainbow. Uh, did you feel like you were watching The Wizard of Oz instead? <laughs> I think they kind of overdid it a little. Now, one thing I want to mention, uh, the scene where Detective Cornell, he goes over to Jill's apartment and he's talking about that painting on the wall that was called The Garden of Hope. That particular painting, The Garden of Hope, was a very popular print that appeared in many homes from the 1920s through the 1940s. And we also had, uh, maybe you picked up on it, a lot of scenes where in the backdrop of the scene you, you saw a lot of advertising for Chesterfield cigarettes. Back in that era, 
Chesterfield cigarettes, I mean, they were as popular of a brand as what Marlboro or Camel are today. They, they were basically the Marlboros of their era. Now, Betty Grable, and she played Jill. Come on, you knew I had to get to Betty Grable here, right? Well, she was, uh, as I said in the opening, certainly most famous for her musicals and comedies, and tonight's picture was her only noir. Now, she was born in St. Louis, Missouri, grew up there, but from a very early age, she was pressured by her mother to be a performer. You know, doing all of the school plays, entering beauty pageants, many of which she did win. Uh, but one thing about Betty uh, is she is probably known for her very famous photo. Uh, and I'm putting it up right here. This photo, and it was taken by Frank Pawalny, this pinup picture was the most requested photo by GIs during World War II. Over three million of them were sent out. You know, the, the one-piece bathing suit, her hair's in an updo, and she's looking over her shoulder. And by the way, you will see that picture two ways, whether she's looking over her left shoulder or her right. All they did in the film process, they just flipped the negative over and they printed it both ways. But uh, yeah, the most requested photo during World War II by GIs, over three million of them sent out. But I do want to dispel a myth with this picture. There is a popular myth that this picture was taken from this angle from the back because she was pregnant at the time. That is not true. For whatever reason, however that rumor got started, but it's false, she was not pregnant at the time. Because, and here's some more photos. These photos were taken during the same photo session. But these pictures are from the front. Now, as we can see, she's clearly not pregnant. Uh, it, look, they're from the same photo session, right? But for whatever reason, you know, the first one was the one that was the most popular. Um, in fact, just to prove this, um, this was just a few weeks ago. I very much had the honor and privilege of being in Normandy, France and doing a lot of the tours of the museums and memorials and monuments to the D-Day landings in World War II, you know, as we did the D-Day landings in Normandy. Uh, that is something uh, I'll go to my grave always remembering that. But just, just to illustrate the point with Betty Grable, th these are some pictures I took. Uh, th th these photos were taken at Utah Beach. That was one of the invasion beaches uh, by the Americans. This photo was taken inside an abandoned German bunker that once the Americans took the bunker, they converted it to a communication post. And just to make something, uh, a, a, shall I say, a tourist attraction, you know, for people touring the beach, uh, they set up this diorama inside this bunker, you know, trying to recreate the scene as it would have appeared then. And if you look at this photo, um, you'll notice two pictures uh, in the backdrop. One is up on the wall. And the other is down on, you know, uh, a radio machine, you know, down on the counter. Uh, in recreating this diorama, what photos did they use to recreate the diorama? Yes, Betty Grable's picture. So, uh, 
Just to illustrate how popular it was in World War II, yeah, even today, uh, at the Normandy beaches today, they've used these photos to recreate that diorama there in that abandoned German bunker that subsequently became an American communication post. Now, Betty Grable, obviously, her musicals and comedies, best known. Uh, some of her good works, she was in Million Dollar Legs, Tin Pan Alley. She was in Moon Over Miami, that one. She worked with Carol Landis in that one as well. So they have worked together before. And she was in How to Marry a Millionaire. In that one, she was in with Marilyn Monroe and Lauren Bacall. Now remember, if you like tonight's picture, you want to see more like it, click on the subscribe button here. You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar and you can find all of the prior releases. And as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.